Hi everyone, thanks for joining me uh, this morning. We have Imuna up for review today. Um, she is an 80 foot brand new 2013 um, Ferretti. Very, very light use. In fact, there's only uh, just over 200 hours on the engines. So, um, great deal here uh, to get yourself a brand new raised pilot house. Um, so, let's get stuck in. Um, first page of the of the brochure there um, actually it's worth mentioning uh, before I get stuck in this brochure that I have here and, and a lot of extra information I do have um, available ready to go to send to you uh, just click on the request more information button on the um, right hand side here and I'll, I'll send that off to you right away um, so here's Amuna said 80 foot Ferretti brand new uh, Beautiful boat, a very sort of a aggressive, um, futuristic lines almost. Um, very Euro style, modern style on the on the interior. Take a look at some of the specifications here. Um, a fairly standard beam, uh, slightly over twenty feet. The um, draft is um, maybe a hair over. Um, average but I think that draft that they're giving you there is fully loaded so depending on um, sort of how much you have in the fuel tanks and water tanks then that will probably come down um, sort of within the, the five foot range there which is very standard so 2013 brand new built by Ferretti uh, Ferretti is of course um, a, a very well known and established Italian uh, boat builder you go over to Europe um, probably two out of every five boats that you see over there will be Ferretti's so um, very established and experienced in boat building fiberglass hull um, it's flagged in the BVI the um, engines that they have on here are the MTU 2000s um, very very high powered engines um, and that would explain the cruising speed that you can see here is up at 27 knots with a maximum of 31 knots so um, this will get you wherever you need to go very very quickly and in uh, some pretty uh, pretty cool surroundings four staterooms all of the staterooms on this are all on the same level on the uh, lower level of the boat um, a lot of times on these style boats on the um, raised pilot houses they put a berth um, a guest berth up in the bow um, it actually works very well how they have it laid out here um, because that forward cabin is slightly um, back in the in the hull sort of form so it means you get more of a beam to that cabin than you would if it was right up at the bow of course because the the hull comes back together um, there so four staterooms accommodate up to eight guests um, in the bow what they have is the crew accommodation um, which is fine that's generally the noisiest place on the boat anyway you get a lot of the the water slapping when you're anchor and of course um, uh, rushing water when you're underway and whenever you drop anchor it's right there over your head so best to have the crew there than than um, than a guest in uh, in those conditions um, two crew cabins up to four crew members and the asking price you can see there is a, a, a very competitive four million nine hundred and ninety five uh, US dollars um, so let's get stuck into these these photographs here um, the top photograph that you can see on the right hand side that's aft looking forwards uh, in the main salon very um, modern euro style as i said it's almost sort of a teak and holly look that they have to the floor there i think that's it looks like a, a cherry stained wood but it gives it this real rich um sort of oak color uh with the holly bands going um front to back and the rest of the the cabinetry is more of sort of an, an ash tone uh huge windows running um port and starboard all the way along makes it feel very open very airy they've got the blinds down in these uh, photographs here so it's hard to um, 
sort of imagine that but uh, everywhere that you see white on the port and starboard side that's all window there so you can imagine being uh, out in the open and having all the blinds up um, nice raised uh, TV there it lifts up out of the cabinetry on the port side um, and then forwards you can see um, in both those photographs there's the uh, dining room table so it's a very cool um, glass dining room table so almost a uh, the whole feel here is almost um, minimalistic, I want to say, but it's a bit more, um, um, bit more sort of warm than than what you stereotypically think of uh, um, minimalistic. One thing to mention on this boat that isn't on the standard model from Ferretti, um, and you can see it here just about on the lower um, left-hand photograph forwards of the steps there you can see a, a little door I'll highlight it here um, that's actually a day head now that doesn't come standard out of the um, factory this was a, um, more of a, a, a one-off option um, but which is great otherwise you'd have to kind of go downstairs um, to go to the nearest bathroom so really nice having that feature on this level um, you can see on that same photograph that's actually the the steps going up to the flybridge and then the um, after that is, is the sort of access down into the the cabin um, lower area so let's move into that now um, two beautiful full beam cabins one master one VIP um, it's got these massive windows in the in the whole sides which really opens up these rooms um, it's actually nice large size sort of portholes or, or, or windows in all four of the rooms down here which is quite special um, the master cabinet you can see on the right hand side here um, port side of the hole that window that you can see is a nice little seating area and then on the other side they have the ensuite bathroom. Now there's a real cool um, mirror sort of section that can slide backs and forwards. It's in front of the sink and you can move it sort of um, either into the shower so that the shower becomes more private and, and you can't see it from, from outside of the, the hole looking in. Or you can have it in, in front of the mirror so you can see um, yourself brushing your teeth or doing your hair. And I think there are some photographs of that uh, here now okay so the uh, top photograph on the left hand side that's the mirror that I was talking about there and you can see the shower on the um, sort of right hand side of the photograph there and, and there's the, the window that, that looks into that compartment so um, if you're somewhere secluded it's probably nice to have that that window there if you're somewhere a little more crowded maybe in a marina with a, another boat right right next to you then you can slide that mirrored panel over so that it um, so that it separates that area and, and you have a lot more privacy so great uh, great feature there and and really nice um, euro style sort of bathroom there it uh, it's a nice um, nice interior decor on this boat so underneath um, that photograph still on the left hand side this is um, says VIP that's actually not the VIP that is the um, double uh, or, or full bed sorry which is one of the the other two cabins um, the other cabin which isn't the VIP is is uh, a bunk so the actual VIP is this uh, photograph that we're looking at on the bottom right hand side um, and that's full beam actually behind where this photograph is taken there is another uh, sort of large window and right in the middle of that photograph that's the access through to the the bathroom which is what you can see on the the top photograph there on the um, right hand side and another large set of windows in there also um, so two full berth uh, sorry, full beam cabins, which is 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 great. It it actually solves one of the problems when you're um, on charter and you have two principal charter guests or the main two sort of uh, couples that have chartered the boat. 
there's always that um, that sort of awkward moment of who gets the master cabin. <laughs> so this this solves that. Um, the top photograph on the left that's the VIP um, bathroom. There's the the large windows that I was talking about. Below that is the bunk room. So that's the fourth cabin. Um, another big window in there and a nice sort of bunk set up. The lower berth is um, sort of a, a double size bed and, and the top is a single. So a nice kids room um, and that's their bathroom that you can see at the top on the right as well. Um, the bottom photograph on the right, that's the stairwell as it says underneath it, leading back up to the main salon. Um, now this boat, the... Um, the bridge is a very futuristic sort of Starship Enterprise um, looking setup. You can see that there on the um, left hand side at the bottom um, and actually at the top on the right as well. So a, a nice um, sort of helm panel, beautiful helm seat um, and they have a, another uh, helm up on the flybridge as well, so it gives you a second um, second steering location. The top photograph on the uh, left hand side, that's the galley. Um, a fairly small uh, galley, you're not going to be cooking huge meals for 50 people in this galley, but it is a nice family sort of size um, galley you can see there's a nice oven there in the center of the photograph there's some a, a, a sort of flat um, stove top uh, convection um, stove top um, it, it's not the similar boats and you'll see that on on this same uh, range of, of boats that I'm reviewing today um, some of them have much larger sort of country style kitchens but this is a bit bit smaller um, you know it's a different style but it's more of a, a sort of euro style um, and generally the country kitchen is a uh, US take on the raised pilot house so um, you'll you'll generally see similar sort of setups on on euro um, or European built boats uh, to this. They have a nice little breakfast nook. You can see that on the top photograph on the right hand side. Um, and then there's a sort of a little high top seating area there just forwards of, of the bridge. Um, actually, on that top photograph on the right hand side, um, towards the left of that photograph, that um, sort of cabinet there that is the um, day head so it, it looks a little small there but it's actually fairly um, fairly nice size once you're once you're on the boat and, and walking through it um, moving up onto the flybridge um, it's a, a, a pretty big flybridge on on this it has a nice uh, canopy sort of uh, uh, fixed bimini top um, there's a, a helm station up there that sort of um, retracts and, and seals away when you're not using it. This photograph on the bottom left hand side has got a nice big seating area. You can see there's a wet bar there on the on the right hand side of that photograph. It has a, a grill and a, and a sink and um, feels sort of nice and um, uh, nice and comfortable up there. I think there's some more photographs of that. Um, yep, right here. So the top photograph on the right hand side, that's a wet bar, you can see the grill there. Um, there's two or three areas of sort of sun lounges here. There's one at the back that you can see on the um, left hand side there. And then there's actually another one forwards. You can just about see it on the bottom photograph on the right. That's the helm station. So that's folded away. Now you, there are sort of screens and things there which fold up and I think there's a photograph of it later on. But just to the right of that, uh, right hand side of that photograph you can see there's a little, uh, we call it a bunny pad here in, in the States. Um, and then a real nice, uh, and this is becoming more and more popular you see on, on a lot of boats uh, on these, um, in fact quite a, a range of style of boats all are starting to have this um, 
little morning coffee area I've heard it described as before and that's the the photograph that's on the bottom left um, so a nice right at the front see that this area up here if this isn't utilized how it is here it's kind of a, um, a lost space it's that sort of in between level um, you'll find a, a lot of boats will just use that as storage and they'll have sort of deck storage up there but it's nice to use it as a seating and you can still have the storage underneath the seats but it really adds another sort of um, dimension to the bow and then that's the third area of the um, sunbathing pads that you can see just behind that table on the on the brow there in fact um, it, even on the larger boats on the on the sort of 150s they still have on on the tri-deckers they still have that section of the bow um, that is is sort of a, a, a wasted space it's not so much an issue now where some of the builders like the trinities are starting to use that split level master cabin so they have real elevated ceilings um, but on the slightly older models when you are up forwards there which is a lot of the times the the master cabin and you pull down the deck heads you see this big void up there so this is a nice way to uh to take advantage of of that space um a little bit of uh builder's insight for you there um so here that's the um that's the some of the flybridge controls I actually thought there was a picture of the uh, let's see here now so going back to this photograph here the bottom right so the the sort of higher cream section that you can see there just in front of the throttle controls that whole um, sort of unit there folds up and you have um, two screens there you have your chart plotter your radar everyone it's basically a, a, a repeat of, of what you have in the um, in the actual helm station down in inside the boat um, so the cruise quarters that's one of the crew cabins there at the bottom left there are two crew cabins here um, this laundry is actually a, a, a great use of space when you walk down to the crew area this little laundry is down again so that's really in the bowels of the of the bow that that uh, sort of washer dryer area there which is a great use of space on some of the um, American built boats they actually put the washer dryer in the guest foyer um, it's you know a give and take six one half dozen of of the other so nice um, nice version here um have it in the in the crew area and keep the laundry away from the guests um in the photograph with the the engine room there you can see our mtu 2000s great engines um very high powered they have a, a dual level turbos a, um very sort of high tech engines as opposed to the um, caterpillars which are a bit more uh, sort of basic um, engines still great engines but um, not quite as um, electronically dependent as the the MTUs are here <coughs> this is something that I, I forgot to mention earlier um, so the top photograph on the left hand side that's looking from the aft cockpit there through to the um, main salon and you see they have this huge window section that actually folds up and really opens up that entire area um, dual that with uh, you can imagine those blinds lifted up um, you can see the blinds are closed there inside main salon so have them lifted up really opens this area right up um, and makes it sort of an inside interior exterior uh, sort of space so great big um, aft cockpit there we can see on the bottom left hand photograph nice big uh, couch and a nice sort of uh, cockpit table there um, two side profile shots there of the boat the photograph that's on the top right that's the actual boat that's Imuna I think the photograph on the bottom is um, just sort of a, a generic shot that's pulled off of the uh, Ferretti website you can see that the whole windows there are slightly different makeup 
and, and sort of arrangement to the actual windows that you can see on the, the top photograph on the right. So, um, moving on, so it's worth mentioning on this boat, and, and this is something that we're seeing more and more um, these days, is um, anti-roll gyros. Now, you know when you're a kid and you have the, the little sort of gyro with the, the toothed um, sort of band that you put in and you, and you pull it and the gyro spins and you can sort of balance it on your finger and it, and it doesn't fall over. Well, that's the same um, theory behind these anti-roll gyros that are now starting to fit in um, boats. They're much less, much, much less maintenance. They're much less power that's used to, to operate and drive them. Um, so there are two on, on board here. I've seen them on sort of 30 or 40 foot Intrepids. Um, Heeson is now fitting them on their uh, 140 and 150 ranges. So um, really starting to see these gyros come more and more um, predominantly into the industry. And um, it's, uh, it, it's a, a, a pretty... Um, exciting thing to have. You imagine now you'll no longer have the stabilizer fins stuck out of the hull, so it's going to mean less um, sort of obstruction for the hull traveling through the water, so your fuel efficiency is going to be better, it's less protrusions to catch on things. Um, I'm sure many of you pulled up a, a few lobster pots in, in your time going through uh, New England. Um, so a great feature there, um, um, and we will start seeing them more, more and more um, as the, the years go on. Uh, this just lists all of the um, electronics that are installed. It's not much of a write-up on this brochure. Um, basically lists everything from the washer-dryers to um, iPod docking stations to underwater lights to what generators are in there so to have a, a, a read through that you can also go on to the Ferretti website if you wanted to see um, some more photographs of the um, of the boat. Um, looking towards the bottom on the right hand side um, you can see only 230 hours on these MTU engines which is incredible low usage um, it must have literally come off the, the ship um, from Europe, dropped in here, maybe went out on a couple of trips and, and now they're, uh, they're ready to move on. So an incredible opportunity to, to um, benefit from, from, uh, from this boat um, being up for sale now. Um, as I said, we do have uh, this full brochure and a few other bits and pieces of information. Um, so click on the request more info button um, and I'll send that off to you right away. We do um, three boats every week. Um, if you want to be the first to know when the, the latest reviews are up, then um, go down and click on the be the first to know button and we'll send you a, a quick email when, um, when the reviews are up. So thanks for joining and see you next time.